Uh, we'll start with the philosophical aspects, and we invited uh, Professor Moshe Halbertal. I think he's one of the leading philosophers of the, our time. He's a professor in the Hebrew University, interdisciplinary in New York, and a writer of many articles and studies that deal with the ethics and philosophy. Professor Halbertal. First of all, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, Tamir, I wish you all the best, lots of luck. In the very short time I have, I'd like to distinguish uh, something that a good friend of mine, Avishai Margalit, he wrote a book, uh, Compromises and Rotten Compromises. That's the name of the book. And I think that we as humans, sometimes we are measured not just by our principles, but by our compromises. What do we compromise on, what we don't? And in the context of this discussion today, we realize we cannot be purists in the full sense of the world, because we're talking about practical life and interest that compels you to have compromises. And the question is, where does the uh, we draw the line. I don't want to talk about red lines. I don't want to say what the red line is, because by definition, a red line is a line that was crossed. I don't know one red line that wasn't crossed. Usually that's what happens. But I want to talk about a concept that I think is much more significant. I'll call it the uh, sacred uh, area. I'd like to give a definition philosophical to sanctity or to holiness. What is it? Holiness is that area that uh, you don't do practical things out of, right? When the Mishnah wants to define a synagogue, it says that, uh, that it shouldn't uh, do a detour. You cannot just cross the synagogue in the middle. It's not yours. It's not an instrument. And by the way, when I want to test something, I come to a company and I'm asking always, what's holy? What's uh, sacred in this company? And I look at the TV programs that they show and I ask, uh, what program will they not advertise in? Uh, what uh, program of high rating that uh, we won't see, Bank Leumi or Coca-Cola, whatever? By the way, in Israel, it's an interesting question because you said that the Israeli uh, society is going to lose sanctity if in the middle of the Memorial Day, maybe a presenter will come or a commercial of some sort. Our question is the following. What is the sacred uh, environment or area of a society? The society does not show, see it as a server of its interests. No instrumental attitude. And I want to make a comment about politics, and not necessarily politics of uh, foreign politics, but politics, power. One of the interesting things regarding power is that power is uh, vulnerable to both sides. One is the following. For the citizens, power is a means. It's a means to obtain the collective good. For the powerful, usually the power is a goal. You say, what does the American president want to do in his first term of office? First of all, he wants to be elected again, second time. OK, that's understandable. But then uh, another turnabout happens. And another turnabout happens that in order to preserve the power, you turn other principles into instruments. And I'll give you uh, an example from the Bible. There's a moment when David threatens Saul. David, everybody loves David, charisma. And also Michal, she also loves David, Saul's daughter. By the way, the only place in the Bible that it says that a woman loves somebody. Michal loves David, and Saul hears it. And the verse said, and he liked it. He thought it was good. And the reader said, yeah, good shidduch. But then he said, but she will become his mine. He wants to use her 
in order to eliminate his enemy. And then we have the famous story that says to David, do you want to join uh, the uh, kingdom? You have to give uh, the uh, um, <coughs> to kill the, a lot of Philistines as a dowry. And the reader asks himself, where, how much corruption is in the power that the person is ready to turn his own daughter into an instrument in order to stay in power? Where did it come to? Look at the turnover of everything. Let's say that the plot would have succeeded. Let's assume that it would have succeeded and now David would have died because uh, what, uh, what uh, Michal feel. Now this is a biblical example, but we see this example every day. Let's say you remain in the power by uh, adding the most uh, cr uh, crazy le le element in the Israeli society and uh, demo in, in Europe, that you put the um, worst enemy into power because of your interests. Who are we? And therefore, the question is always, does the national interest serve anything, or does it become a goal in itself, an objective? By the way, we have a problem, maybe it's too political, but I'm already saying, I'm saying what I feel, not personally, but what I feel. In security considerations, by the way, that they are the expression of interests, you can bring Israel to a situation that it will be more secure, that's true, but I'm not sure we want to protect such a state. A very complicated question in the long run. And I'd like to try to answer, it has to do with the question that Yedidia put, it's a very deep, the Jewish component, the Jewish philosophy. I want to take the Ukrainian case, Israel had a very serious security interest not to supply arms to the Ukraine. And that's uh, obvious. We have the Russians in Syria. It's a very delicate issue. I would say in compromise, it's not a rotten compromise. It's a reasonable compromise. Well, when did it start being problematic? And I'm talking personally now. It has to do when we blocked the entry of immigration at the certain phases of Ukrainian refugees to the state of Israel. And you say, just a minute, just a second. This already jeopardizes who we are, not what we do. Because we kept uh, complaining to the world all the time that the world was silenced. What are, you, are we complaining on now? Who are we? And I think, and here I'll conclude my thought about such a deep issue, that you know that compromising on principles for the sake of interest has become already very problematic when it comes to a point where it jeopardizes the most basic texture of who you are. You yourself, Yedidia, apropos your question, as a Jew in this situation. By the way, apart from a rotten compromise, there's also a stupid compromise. I don't want to go into it just now, because many times rotten comes with stupid, maybe. And you say to yourself, uh, uh, what, we uh, give them maybe a, a bu bulletproof vests, we're going to compromise for that. Uh, these are already questions that maybe they are practical. But I would uh, uh, focus on the value-based or philosophical discussion, the question of the sacred area, the sacred space. One of the most interesting things, what happens to a society that no longer has a sacred uh, environment, a sacred inside or outside area. And one of the things that happen is a completely lack of trust. You expect from a political administration to do all sorts of compromises to reach power. But some things you don't want it to do, for example, to send soldiers in order to stay in power or to open a battle, to wage a war. 
in order to stay in Pio. You don't want any deep components in the definition of the collective good will not be there and then what is generated is already the border of the situation. It generates a lack of trust, which is very deep, because when everything is political, there's no politics anymore. Everything is political is a destruction of politics. When politics does not have some sort of a factual platform based on values, which is beyond the, the game power, there's no more politics in the deep sense of the word. And these are the questions, or these are some of the thoughts that I wanted to raise, and maybe they'll uh, help us clarify the question.